Thank you, everyone, for coming. This is awesome. Pretty much packed house. We hope you're having an awesome time at Dreamforce so far. Uh, our session today is going to be on building custom lightning components with the lightning design system. My name is Asha. I'm a software engineer here at Salesforce, and I work on our platform. And I'm Ayesha. I work as a UX engineer on the Lightning Design Systems team here at Salesforce. So to kick things off, we're going to start with some fun facts about us. We went to the same school, grades K through 12, and grew up around the corner from one another, so we've known each other a really long time. And as if that wasn't enough, we then went to the same college together. Go Tritons. Uh, that means we spent 17 years at the same school together, but weirdly enough, didn't really know each other until we started volunteering together in college. So here we are post-graduation, but we're both working at Salesforce. However, we're on opposite sides of the development life cycle. So Aisha is a UX engineer, and she builds the Lightning Design System. And I'm a software engineer that consumes that Lightning Design System to build Lightning components on the Salesforce application. We have a lot of fun together. So before we go any further, I got to cover everyone's favorite slide. Safe Harbor, don't make any purchasing decisions based on what you're about to see today. Sweet. So today's agenda. Uh, first, together, we're going to learn some vocabulary. And then we'll cover the goals for the session. And then we'll motivate those goals. Why should you care about what we're doing today? And then we'll actually do a demo together and build a lightning component and leave some time for Q&A at the end. So to start off, let's make sure we're all on the same page when we talk about some of these things that we'll need for today's discussion. Specifically, SLDS, Blueprint, and Component. You're going to hear us say these words a thousand times today, so we wanted to make sure you knew what we meant when we say these. So let's start with SLDS. This starts for, stands for Salesforce Lightning Design System. That's kind of a mouthful, though. We don't prefer to say that over and over all the time, so we just abbreviate it to SLDS or the design system. Now, you might be asking, what is the design system? It's essentially a library of many, many blueprints that you could possibly need for your Lightning development. So here we've shown a screenshot from Progress Bar. We also have inputs, form elements, cards, activity timelines, carousels, basically any little bit of UI that you might need to build your interface is included as part of the design system. Now, in that definition, I used the word blueprint. So what is a blueprint? It's essentially the HTML and CSS that we deliver with the design system. And so you would then use this HTML and CSS to create a framework agnostic accessible component. So everything from SLDS is static. It's not interactive. It's kind of a bring your own JavaScript situation. We did this so that we don't force anyone to use a particular framework over another, right? We made it agnostic so that you can integrate it however need be. So if we take this example again of progress bar here, in that code block, this is kind of the markup that we are delivering and we're recommending you to use. And so you can see it includes ARIA attributes. It includes a role of progress bar. This is how we help ensure that your components become accessible. We also give you the styling. So those classes that are prefixed with SLDS, that hooks up to the CSS that we provide so that you, the general idea is you never have to worry about CSS. You shouldn't have to write any custom styling yourself. We can take care of that for you. Sometimes it's not the easiest thing in the world to do either. And so the less you can do, probably the better. And together, that HTML and CSS is what we call a blueprint. Last but not least is component. So a component is something that's built from a blueprint. But unlike a blueprint, which is static, like Aisha was saying, it's not really interactive. It doesn't have JavaScript. A component is much richer. It does all those things. It's interactive. It probably has data from your use case or your business. And these are what you actually use to build up your application. And in the world of components, today you're going to hear us talk about two different kinds. There's base and experience components. A base component is a very simple component. It's kind of like a building block. It has one job to do. It's pretty straightforward. An experience component is going to be a little bit more complex and built up of other base components. 
So we've covered the vocabulary. What are we actually doing together today? It's basically gonna be a day in the life of Aisha and I. We collaborate at work a lot. I get her help on how to use the design system to build components. And so that's what we're gonna do today together. We're gonna take a blueprint from the design system and turn it into a dynamic lightning component that we actually can use in our application. Or in other words, if we go back to that progress bar example, we're going to take the blueprint from the design system side, which is that markup and that CSS, add in some developer magic, which we hope by the end of this session will no longer feel like magic. That's the part we wanna demystify a little bit. And in the end, we'll have a functional interactive component that responds to clicking, keyboard interaction, and data. So why would you wanna do this? Why do you care about building custom lightning components? There are kind of two situations you might be in. Maybe you've looked at the design system and you found the perfect blueprint, but Salesforce hasn't built the lightning component version of it yet for you to use. Or maybe Salesforce has built the lightning component, but it's not exactly what you need, and there are small things that you need to tweak or change for your use case. In both of those situations, you might wanna start at the blueprint and build your own lightning component. Sweet, so now we all understand the vocabulary behind some of the things we're talking about. We understand what we're going to do today and kind of why we might want to do it. Let's get into the really fun part, just demo time and understand how we're gonna do it. Now, as any good developer knows, we're instead of just diving into the code, we are going to take a step back and we're going to plan. It's definitely a crucial step and not something we want to skip. So let's say I have an amazing business called Pizza Pal, and I want my customers to be able to surprise their friends with their favorite pizza, send pizza to their friends. But the thing is, pizza is not special if you have it every day. Your friends do not want pizza sent to them every day. They're gonna start hating pizza. So I want my customers to be able to tell me a very specific condition of when the pizza should be sent. Maybe if it's their birthday, or maybe if it's my birthday, they wanna send pizza to me, or maybe if it's the last day of Dreamforce, they wanna send pizza. So whatever is special to them, whatever conditions they care about, I want them to be able to let me know, and then I'll send the pizza appropriately. So, listening to Asha's business use case, this reminds me of a brand new blueprint that we just built on the design system side called Expression. So we built this out for winter 19. It's public, you can totally go and play with it now. It's a really cool blueprint, and if you see here, we've taken a screenshot from the design system site, and it helps us understand that expression is used to give your users the ability to declaratively construct logical expressions. So let's say I wanna filter a list based on you know, multiple different categories and types of details, or maybe I wanna kick off an event, like sending pizza, when certain criteria has been met. The expression blueprint is the design system's recommendation for you on how to handle this from a UI perspective. So looking at this, understanding the use case, this would be my best recommendation for Asha for her Pizza Pal app. So I agree, it sounds perfect. I would love to use the expression. So first things first, I'm gonna go to the Lightning Component Library and see if expression lightning component already exists. Because if the lightning component exists, it's gonna be rich and handle my data and all that stuff. So if I look in the list where expression should be, you're gonna see it's not built yet, but that's totally fine. That's what we're gonna do together today. We're gonna take the expression blueprint from the design system and make a lightning component. So like Asha said, just because the full out-of-the-box component is not available for us yet, doesn't mean we have to stop and give up, right? We can take the blueprint from the site and customize it ourselves to create that lightning component. The best way to do that is kind of start breaking down what the blueprint looks like. So a lot of the formula and the layout for what an expression blueprint looks like comes from SLDS, right? So how those rows get laid out, how the legend text gets positioned, how new rows would line up, that's all handled by SLDS. But looking at this, if you go back to our definitions earlier, this is definitely one of those experience blueprints, right? It's made up of a lot of smaller pieces. 
and those smaller pieces do exist in the Lightning Component Library. So if we start breaking this down, let's take those first dropdowns as an example. These five dropdowns are what we call a combo box. Now, many of you are probably familiar, Lightning Combo Box already exists. That's awesome news for us, right? That means we don't have to reinvent the wheel for these five combo boxes and figure out how to hook up keyboard navigation and interaction and click handlers with them. The Lightning component's going to do it for us. And we can continue doing this through our component. So now we look at those values at the end. Those are what we call inputs, right? The user can type either letters, numbers, maybe both into that input. And then if we keep going, the action on the end of each row that would delete that row is what we call a button icon. This also already exists as a lightning component. I can go again. The buttons at the bottom already exist. Even the text, there's a component that will handle that as well. So now, if we look at this again, there isn't really much that we need to customize ourselves. A lot of this can be handled already by existing lightning components. So this is kind of our main goal for today is use what is already available from the Lightning Components Library so that we don't have to do all the work ourselves while also taking advantage of all the styling that's been provided by the design system for the layout of this. Because you probably don't want to try to lay this out yourself and do the styling yourself. It can be a little bit tricky, and that's why we have a design system. So my next step after I break down those pieces and identify the different Lightning Components would definitely be to go back to the Lightning Component Library and make sure I understand the API behind each of those components. So here you can see we're looking at combo box. I can look at the different types of combo boxes. I can see an interactive live demo of that component. And then I can also at the bottom see what the code looks like that I will eventually be using in a few minutes with Asha. So we've broken it down. We understand that we're going to take the blueprint and replace things with the Lightning base components that already exist. So let's actually start doing it together. So I'm going to hop out of the presentation. I'm going to take you over to my Pizza Pal application. Cool. So I've made this app, and my app has an order configuration page. So this is where I want my customers to be able to come and place their orders, give me those conditions on when the pizza should be sent. So this is where our Lightning component is eventually going to live. And let's say by the end of this demo on this page, we want to be able to send pizza to old Dreamforce attendees if it's the last day of Dreamforce. So last day of Dreamforce is going to be our, our goal condition. So where do we start? We know we're using the design system. So let's hop over there first and look at the blueprint. So if you go to the Lightning Design System website, you're going to see this Components Blueprint section. So if you hop in there, you're going to see the tons of blueprints that their team has made for us. Uh, we're specifically interested in expression. So when you go into one of the blueprints, it's going to show you an example of the kind of static markup of what that blueprint looks like, and also give you all the, the code of that markup. So I could expand it and look deeper, but let's just actually copy paste it on our clipboard. I'm going to steal everything that I can from this blueprint. So I'm going to take this blueprint on my clipboard and paste it into a lightning component. So first, I need a lightning component to paste into. So let's do that together. If you open the developer console and you do file, new, lightning component, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it copy-paste, because that's all we're doing with the blueprint right now, copy-pasting it. And I want it for my Lightning page. So it's going to make this template uh, empty component for me. And all I'm going to do is paste in the markup that I copied from the design system website. There's a little bit of funkiness with how SVGs work. You can't save this file with SVGs in it. So Aisha and I did a tiny bit of pre-processing ahead of time. We took the copy-pasted blueprint and replaced every SVG with a lightning icon, just so those little pictures could render. Everything else is the same as the copy-pasted blueprint markup. So let's see what this component from the copy-paste got us out of box. Let's see what it looks like. So if I go back to my order configuration page, 
And I use the fabulous Lightning App Builder, and I drag in my blueprint, copy-pasted component, and save. We can go back and take a look. So it looks pretty darn fabulous. Like It looks like the end product of what I want my component to look like at the end, which is amazing, because I have tried to build Lightning components and do styling without Aisha and without the design system. And it was literally not pretty. It's so difficult. It always looked bad. So the design system makes this really, really easy for me as a developer to get it looking right. So this might kind of look like we're done, right? Like it looks like we want it. It's got all the fields we want. But if we actually try to interact with this, you'll notice when I try to click on things, my drop down of options aren't showing up. And that's expected, right? Because if we go back to our definitions between a blueprint and a component, this is still just a blueprint. It's not interactive, right? So the design system doesn't include any of the JavaScript yet. So that's why we're going to make use of the Lightning components. And so we've actually, again, for the sake of time, we've done one component that skips ahead just a little bit in some of those replacements. Let's get rid of our template as well. So if I go back, in this second component, what we've done is we've started replacing those combo boxes that we identified in the slides with the lightning combo box. And so now, if I click on it, my options appear, right? I can make a selection. That selection gets rendered up in the input at the top. I can also, if I'm using my keyboard, hit enter on one of these arrow between my options hit enter again to make my selection. Now, all of that is not the simplest thing in the world to hook up yourself. So that's why we want to save ourselves time and really make use of that lightning combo box component. You can see I've also started customizing. So just because the labels in the design system say something like take action one, doesn't mean you have to stick to that, right? It's a guideline to get you started. So in this case, for Asha's awesome pizza app, we're going to send pizza when certain conditions are met. And to start that off, we're going to be looking at time, right? Because we said the last day of Dreamforce. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like on the code side as well. Now, my first step kind of when doing this, when trying to replace some of the blueprint markup with component markup, is making sure I understand the markup I'm about to delete. Because I want to make sure I'm replacing the right parts, right? So if we look at this, we can kind of start seeing the outline of our component. We've got the expression wrapper which has a title called Conditions. And the first piece of that is the Options section. And that is that Take Action When combo box that we were just looking at. And within that combo box, it has a list box of options. All conditions are met, any condition is met, custom logic, et cetera. So if I were actually to come back to this form element and collapse that, that's like 70 lines of code just to handle that one top combo box. I don't necessarily need to keep all that code, and I know by using the component, the lightning combo box component, I'll be able to replace all of that with a single line. So let's go back to the component library and take a look at the actual documentation for a combo box. Here we can see, in order to get a combo box, I just need this one line where I give it a name, I give it a label, maybe I have placeholder text, and then options and those options get pulled in through an aura attribute. So now that I understand this, I can come back to my component, and here we've got the one that Asha and I have kind of skipped forward a little bit. So here you can see, instead of that take action one, I've now started my send pizza one combo box, and that is using the logic options, which have been brought in up here. And we've simplified our particular component to only have all conditions are met any conditions met in custom logic. We've also done the same for time. So we have month, day, and hour as our options. And here, we've started replacing the time combo box with those different options. So I've got my label as time. It's pulling in those options for the, from the aura attribute. So I've already saved myself two sections of 70 lines worth of code. And so by the end of this, this will be a much simpler component to kind of digest and scale for the future. Now, if we go back to this, I haven't done the operator 
combo box yet, and so that's what Osh is going to take us through and finish off this component in its conversion. Cool, so we've seen some examples of Lightning combo box usage already. We've looked at the API. We've seen the examples that Aisha already has in here. So this should be really similar for us to replace with a Lightning component, so we don't need to spend a ton of time on it. But just like the other ones, it's a ton of code. It's 60-something lines. And we need to replace it with the Lightning component, which means we need some options to give it. So again, for the sake of time, and so I didn't have to type this in front of you and make a bunch of typos, I've made the options already for us. And notice that we know we're dealing with time here, that our conditions are based on month, day, and hour. So our operators should reflect that. Uh, it makes sense for time for our operators to be equal to before, after some time, whereas the default options that the blueprint gave us were more like equal to, greater than, less than. So here, I've cheated a little bit. I had it commented out. But you just have another instance of Lightning Combo Box pointing to the options with some unique name and some label, just this one line. And then you can delete that giant div that used to exist for the static Combo Box. So that's the last Combo Box. Let's stop talking about Combo Boxes. Uh, the, the element on the far right of the row is going to be an input if you remember looking at it. It's not a drop-down like the combo boxes. It's something that the user gets to type into. So we're going to need a different component. So I know that the Lightning input component exists. So I'm going to hop over to the API again, because this is something we haven't worked with before. So we should know the API of what we're about to use. So if you go to Lightning input, first thing you'll notice is there are a lot of different kinds and types of Lightning inputs. So we should first understand which one is best for our use case. So again, we're talking about time, month, day, and hour. All of those values can probably be represented by a number, like 12 for December, 12 for noon, things like that. So I think the number input would make sense for us. So if I select that, you saw the page refresh a little bit, and now it gives you examples of usages of that component and also the code on how to use it. You say lightning input, but you specify this type value to be number. And then just like the combo box, you give it a unique name and a unique label. There are some extra attributes that you could add to lightning input, and definitely check out the component library if you're interested in those. But for the demo, let's just use the simplest line of the lightning input. So I'm going to copy it. We love copy pasting. and where the form element used to be for the static input, I'm going to do a lightning input instead. Now, this wasn't as gnarly as the combo boxes. It's not a lot of code, but it's still good to replace it so that we get all that interactivity and that good lightning component stuff out of the box. So lightning input, type number is what we want. These names don't really make sense for us, so let's maybe call it time value. And for the label, let's just make it short and say value, simple. Whatever works for your use case is fine. So if I save this and I go back and I refresh our page, we should see, let me refresh one more time, we should see that the operator is now interactive. It has those options that we specified that make sense for time. And in addition, the, the combo box, or not combo box, the input on the right is now also a lightning component. And since we specified the that the type is number, the, the browser makes sure that users can only type in numbers into this box. So I can't type any alphabetic characters. You can't see me trying, but I promise it's not happening. And it only lets me enter numbers. So that's awesome. So at this point, the entire row is interactive. So we could probably start entering our conditions. So we, we know we want to send pizza to all Dreamforce attendees on the last day of Dreamforce. So last day of Dreamforce is tomorrow, I think. So Sad. the month should be equal to September, which would be nine since we're using the number values. But that's not descriptive enough. We also need to specify the day. So the day needs to be the 28th. So I'm going to add a condition and say that the day must be equal to the 28th. And if you just paused and went, what the heck, she hit that button and a new row appeared, you're absolutely right. There's demo magic happening. Uh, we did not program that together, and we definitely should. If you want that button to do something, you're going to have to program it. 
because blueprints are static, just like we said. The way that my team handled this when we actually had to build this component at Salesforce is you see that the row is a repeating pattern. They all kind of look the same. You're going to have many of them probably. So we pulled that row out into its own component. We called it condition row. And so whenever the add condition button is hit, the list of rows says, hey, I'm going to push a new row into my list of conditions. And so that's how it was handled out in the wild. But here, it's a demo, so excuse us. <laughs> and you might also be wondering, when we were on the Lightning Component library page for Lightning Input, there was a Lightning Input type that was a date picker, which seems like it would make this a lot easier. You could just say, the time is equal to September 28th. You don't need all these different conditions. You're, again, absolutely right. But in real life, you probably care about more things than just the time. Uh, I'm sure you could schedule a pizza order with Domino's or something like this already. But maybe you also care if the people you're sending pizza to can eat a certain ingredient, like cheese, in which case you're going to need more than one row. You're going to need different types of inputs, things like that. So this gets a little bit richer than what we have time to cover in this demo. But there are lots of different things that you can do with this expression component. And that's what my team has found also. It can handle a lot of different condition types and adapt appropriately to have the right input on the right-hand side. Like, if you knew all the possible ingredients already, maybe this shouldn't be a text box. Maybe it should be another combo box that had, like, cheese, pepperoni, things like that in it. But this is all we had time for. So let's say at this point that I'm ready to place my order. We're going to send pizza to all of you tomorrow. So if I hit Submit, the order goes through, and that's the end of that demo. So back to the slides. Perfect. So just to reiterate something that Asha talked about, kind of the way we go about our development, at least, when we work together, is we kind of get like a VIP working, right? Like that first instance of a working set with the rows and the buttons adding. And then we kind of take a step back and say, OK, how could we make this scalable, right? We're not going to be copy pasting 100 rows manually ourselves. So like Asha was talking about, maybe that's something that needs to be abstracted into yet another custom lightning component. So that way, that expression builder component that we were building ends up as just kind of a wrapper. And inside, you probably have more custom lightning components. Maybe you have something to handle the list of conditions. And within that component, you are then adding the rows that Asha was talking about. And that way, that's how you scale this across you know, different teams, different products, instead of making it singular to one use case. So sadly, in 30 minutes, it's really hard to cover that part as well. So that's a whole nother talk. But I think we have covered quite a bit so far. Hopefully, everyone now understands the difference between a blueprint and a component. This is really helpful when you're working with the design system and the Lightning Components library, because sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. Like, why doesn't my thing from the design system work out of the box, right? We've also looked at how to take those larger experience blueprints from the design system and break those down so that we know what smaller lightning components we can utilize even when the whole thing isn't a lightning component itself. We've also seen how to build custom lightning components. Asha did a really great demo of showing us how to interact with all of those different resources to create that component. And then, Something we might have probably already known, but pizza has to be special. And with that, if anyone has any questions, we can totally take some time to answer those. We'll also hang around if anyone has questions that you don't feel like asking the whole room. But other than that, thank you very much.